Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. So today we have... Anushka Aurora. I'm a radio and TV presenter and your Bollywood BFF. <laughs> <laughs> so we have actually done a full Bollywood skincare series for you, uh, reacting to everyone's skincare routine. But today I want to do one that I'm really shocked at the title and this DIY sunscreen. Oh God. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I, I haven't watched it, but I'm I'm nervous and it's had thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this is something that we should, someone needs to address. So Ooh. we're going to address it. I feel like the, the cloud just went It just went, yeah. yeah the, the cloud just the changed left. the color. The clouds are crying for a second and the clouds now <laughs> left. <laughs> because we all know how Dr. Benita feels about DIY home <laughs> sunscreen okay oh this is Come just on. not cool but i think it should be a new girl i think so too yeah, yeah. Okay. i mean sitting with you here today i also feel the same now <laughs> i like I'm convert everyone to yeah. Before we begin, I'm just going to talk a little bit about sunscreen and the testing that goes into a sunscreen. So as a lot of you know, um, I created Inzincable. So it's a mineral sunscreen specifically for skin of color with no white cast. So when I created this sunscreen, we have to basically go through about a year to one and a half years of clinical studies to make sure that it is UVA, um, what protection you're getting from UVA, what protection you're getting from UVB, is it stable? Is it stable in different temperatures? And is it stable in the packaging that's in here? And write down to the directions. So you actually have to write at the back legally the directions before use, um, before you can even sell a sunscreen. Sunscreens go through rigorous testing in vivo and in vitro. This means that on human skin, we test it to see how much, how long do can we put um, UV on the skin before it burns. Um, and uh, in so in vivo and in vitro testing, so in a test tube too. So we do both with us a lot of testing that goes into making a sunscreen. It's literally the hardest thing to make out of all my products that I've ever made. Insinkable was the hardest because of the amount of testing that needed to happen and how many years it takes to do per product. So when I see a DIY sunscreen and it's all over TikTok and you know people really start to believe these oh God. these people, um, it's quite it, it hurts. The reason it hurts for me is because you die if you get um, cancer from skin cancer, which happens predominantly because of UV on the skin. So if you even get five blisters, sun blisters in your childhood, so up until you're 20 years old, you have an 80% increased chance of getting skin cancer. So it's no joke. It's something that we need to protect ourselves against. I hear people say, but Dr. V, what about vitamin D? No one wears enough sunscreen to prevent vitamin D from mm -hmm. coming into the system. And so that that's just not a concern. Uh, it's just I hear I hear so mm. many concerns and myths yeah. against sunscreen that um, is dangerous. So that's where I'm starting from. That's my starting point. Mm. So let's see what this lady has to say. Okay. Namaskar. Let me tell you about some best sunscreen lotions. These are homemade sunscreen lotions that may be prepared with readily available ingredients in the house and apply it to your skin before going out to protect your skin. Number one, milk and lemon juice. Raw milk can help in reversing suntan and awesome. also protect your skin from sun damage no. when you step out oh in the spot. Scorching heat. Raw milk helps in production of collagen, what? which gives your skin a natural glow. Oh Lord. Also applying cold raw milk helps in soothing oh sunburn. <laughs> so basically raw milk does not stimulate collagen, number one. Uh, it doesn't penetrate the dermis in order to, to stimulate collagen. So she's wrong there. Uh, number two, um, it has zero SPF pr um, protection. So it does not protect you from UVA or UVB rays. So UVA ages the skin, UVB burns the skin. Um, and number three, she's now added in lemon juice. So lemon juice has a very low pH of about two, two to three. When your skin has a pH of five, 
And so imagine it's very acidic for your skin and that leads to burn. So imagine I've put acid on your skin and I've gone go out into the scorching heat and let's see what happens. Oh, it's like the worst experiment. And then I think she even had a child that she was putting mm, this thing on. Mm. I mean, disaster. I mean, there's just no other it's word for it. In vitamin C, which can help in successfully reducing spots and pigmentation. So vitamin C, she is right. Vitamin C does help with pigmentation, but there are different forms of vitamin C. This is ascorbic acid. That's a low pH. You don't use lemon or orange and, and do that. What you can do is use sodium ascorbyl phosphate, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. These are all vitamin Cs that have been formulated in your sunscreen to protect you and to help with pigmentation from the sun. So you can't just pick up a banana and start rubbing it on your face, you know? Yeah. To that, add one teaspoon of lemon juice. Mix well these two ingredients and dab a cotton ball and apply this lotion all over the exposed oh area. God. This milk will get absorbed instantly in skin. Second, aloe vera and zinc lotion. Oh, Take one teaspoon aloe vera gel, yeah. half teaspoon jojoba oil okay. and 50 ml of water. Yeah. Mix all these ingredients they won't mix to well. make a all nice lotion. The mix. And then add three to four teaspoon of zinc oh, oxide wow. for SPF 15. No, you no, can no. also add one a capsule, capsule of, vitamin. of vitamin E okay. for moisturizing. Oh, but too oily or acne prone skin people yeah. should avoid vitamin E. Aloe vera can protect the skin by blocking up to 20% oh, no. of oh, ultra. God. Does aloe vera, there's this myth of it cooling the skin down? That is true. That is so true. it is anti inflammatory, mm -hmm. it is cooling to the skin. I'm happy for you to wear it afterwards. So mm -hmm. if you have a sunburn, for example, mm -hmm. I'm happy for you to wear aloe vera, put aloe vera on the skin. Mm -hmm. It's anti inflammatory, soothing to the skin. It's mm -hmm. a brilliant thing to take with you on holiday. This, however, has no benefit when it comes to blocking UV from hitting the skin, mm -hmm. not UVA or UVB rays. So that would be a mistake. Then she thought, oh, let me just chuck in the zinc oxide into this and make a paste. Zinc oxide is a metal oxide. And in order to make sure that the sunscreen is working, it actually has to be distributed evenly along the lotion. Mm -hmm. And that is a very difficult thing to achieve. And you have to test for it before you then put it on the skin. It's not something you can just whack together mm. and mix. And especially before she's got no emulsifier. Mm. She's basically put in water and oil mm. together and gone, hey, it's a Here go. <laughs> That's not how this thing works. You need an emulsifier to put the two things together. So unfortunately she's wrong. Um, I, know, I, I don't mind the vitamin E capsule. If you wanna do DIY moisturizers, I'm very happy for you to put in a vitamin E capsule. Um, it is also a very good antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. I put it in all my products, um, but so far I'm not that impressed with this sunscreen. By scattering the sun rays, preventing potentially harmful UV radiation, zinc oxide is easily available at nearby chemists or purchased by any known online supplier. Third, aloe vera and glycerin. This is a mild sunscreen formula. Aloe vera, as I've already shared, is a natural and effective sunblock, whereas glycerin also acts as a barrier against the sun damaging rays no, and environmental pollutants. No. It also helps in locking the moisture Keeping your skin soft even in humid climate. That's basically in what it a does. spray bottle, combine aloe vera juice, a few drops of glycerin and rose water. Spray this mist on any exposed part oh of God. your body to protect from sun damage. Disaster number three. So aloe vera, yes, I like it for after sun. Um, and in fact, this is actually quite a good concoction for after sun. I even love the fact you put glycerin mm. in there. It's a humectant, by the way. So it basically, it's, think of it as like a water magnet. It holds water in that top layer of skin, creates a healthy environment for the skin, and so your skin can recover from the sun. This, however, is not it's a sunscreen. Sun yeah. It's not a sunblock. It's not protecting UV, protecting you from UV. And I hate the fact that she's put in um, an image of mm. UV hitting yeah. the skin yeah. and make it look all scientific. Yeah, and it's, it's like, no, it's not blocking. Aloe vera is not blocking the sun, guys. Let's just get that. And if you just right. knew how many views this video had, had, it's just shocking how much damage is probably yeah. unknowingly caused. Spreading, yeah, yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So make sure when you subscribe, you hit that notification bell. Um, so you can come here and ask me your questions. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Vita Rattan. I'm on TikTok as well. And also we have a private Facebook group if you have any questions about your skincare and you want one-to-one -one answers. Um, so that's called Dr. V Sock Family. And yours? Anushka underscore Aurora on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So you'll find me there. You'll basically, you'll find us somewhere. <laughs> we are everywhere. If there's anything else you want us to react to that you think we really have to address when it comes to misinformation, please do write it down below. And I would be honored to do so. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. Bye. Bye.